Hi guys, Kerry here. This is the first video to give you the fundamentals of using Adobe Speedgrade CS6. Now it's worth pointing out that this is the old version of Speedgrade, current as of May 2013. Now in June, Adobe has promised a brand new user interface for Speedgrade, but this video is going to deal with the old interface which a lot of you might have. In this first video, we're going to export some footage from Premiere Pro over to Speedgrade. So you can see here on my timeline, I've got three clips laid out. I've removed the audio and they're just three basic clips. The uh, first one is a piece of footage where a group of people was standing on the cliff. And the second piece of footage is a boat on the water. And the third piece of footage is a seagull resting on the water. Now some of these shots we might want to enhance with colour. We might want to change the scene. We might want to warm things up. So let's take this project now and move it over to speed grade. So the first step is to go to the file menu and you'll find the link for send to Adobe Speedgrade. It's going to now show you a window where you can save your project file or an IRCP file and this is going to be the central location where everything gets exported and where Speedgrade finds its reference files. So you don't have to call it the same thing as the project, you can call it something else like Speedgrade export and then click save. Now this next part might take a little bit of time, depending on the complexity of your project and how many clips you've got. You'll see the window where it says send to Adobe Speedgrade. Sometimes this process can take seconds, sometimes it can actually take hours, because it's rendering everything frame by frame. And obviously if you have a high quality project or a long project, it's going to take a little while. So just be patient. Okay, now that we've finished rendering, our system has opened up Adobe Speedgrade. And I've closed Adobe Premiere Pro to give myself a bit more memory, a bit more resources, because you don't actually need Premiere Pro until you go to render the clip back to it. So this is a general look at the workspace here. We've got the video up in the top left corner. And when it first opens up, it's going to be quite large. And what I've had to do is reduce it to a quarter of the resolution so that it'll fit in this screen. Ideally, Speedgrade is suited for a multiple monitor setup. If you've got something like a, a MacBook Pro or a Mac Mini or a, an any Mac with an HDMI output, you can send it out to a big screen TV and not have to worry about cramping it up in a little window. Down the bottom, you've got all the controls, such as uh, the look of the clip, where you've got the adjustments for the colors and shading. And up here in the middle, you've got the timelines where you can work on the clips. And you can see here that the clip has been broken up into these DPX files. Now DPX is an exchange format to render out everything as an image sequence but keep a lot of metadata. So you can see here that we've got a track of audio. Well we don't need that because we didn't have any audio to start with. So if you click on this icon over here to the left and just drag it right off the timeline until it's down here, that will delete that whole track. So that's going to delete your WAV file there. So we're left with the three clips, and you can scrub across them here with the playhead. And so we've got clip number one, clip number three, the seagull. And in the middle here, the clip with the boat. But you can see that we've got all these yellow patches all over the clip. Now this is a common problem that I've been encountering, and it's hard to know whether it's just my computer or whether it's something that a lot of people are going to face. And it's got something to do with the, uh, the depth of the clip and the colour information in the original clip. Now there are ways to fix this, and there are definitely ways to not fix it, and think that you fixed it, and then realise you've still ended up with these bright yellow splotches. But we are going to deal with that in another video, so in the meantime we might as well just take this right off the timeline. So you can grab the icon here, drag it right off down the bottom, and it'll disappear. So we're left with two clips. So we want to start grading. So here in the uh, timeline tab, you find the grading button and what you want to do is click on it and drag it all the way up here and there's a, a few options you can do in terms of where you release it. If you release it on top of the clip it'll create a new timeline level above the one that you're working with and it will add grading information for all the clips. So you can see that clip 3 over here has a grading association and clip number 1 has grading as well. There's another way that you can do it and we can destroy that by Clicking the icon at the left, dragging it and releasing it down the bottom there. If you drag the grading tool and you hover it above the clip so that the red line is lit up there and then release it, you're going to get grading for just that specific clip. And this might be useful if not every single clip in your project needs to be graded, if you've only got one or two things. So 
we're going to be grading this clip here to start off with. So click the gradient and then click look. And it will open up the controls here. Now obviously there's some presets and then there's the manual controls. And we're not going to spend a lot of time making this clip look really really beautiful because that's up to you to play with. But let's say we took our wheel here, dragged it all the way out to make it quite yellow to warm it up quite a lot. As we drag it out, you'll see the clip warming up straight away. So already we've moved, we've removed that uh, cold white balance that it had before. We might want to play with the contrast of the image. You can grab the outside wheel and rotate it around. And we're going to brighten up the clip like that. Now you can see what the before and after looks like by using the zero key on the number pad of your keyboard. If you hold down zero, you'll see it before. And when you release it, you'll see it after. So there's quite a change there. Let's look at our other clip. And we're going to need to make a grading clip for that because we didn't make one before. So go back to Timeline, take grading, and drag it on top of the clip there. In fact, you can see we've actually made it nice size for this one. It recognizes what's happening because there is already a grading track where there wasn't one the first time around. And so now it's got graded information as well. So we can go back to look. And this time let's apply a preset. Let's go warm overall. When you click that, you can see the picture gets a little bit warmer. We might want to go for warm gamma mix, where it will, it hasn't changed thing too much. So we'll grab that and we'll make it nice and yellow because we want to make people think that this was shot on a really nice warm day. And again, I can hold down zero on the number pad and see the original and then release it to see the color graded clip. So there we go, we've just graded a couple of clips, it wasn't very hard, the longest thing we had to wait for was to, for it to render from Premiere Pro over to speed grade. And in the next video I'm going to show you how to export this back over to Premiere Pro and in future videos I'm going to show you things like how to deal with dissolves and transitions and how to deal with that weird effect that you can get sometimes when you've got bright colored patches in the video clip.